If I let you drive, then I share a lot of merit, or I cannot save it and give it to more people. You think my marriage is immense. It's true, but the world is immense too, and your karma is more than immense. <laughs> the people, not just yours, but the human's karma is more, more than immense, because life after life, generation after generation, the bloodline, DNA keep continue to revolve inside the next generation. That's why in the Bible it says the sin of the father will be transferred to the children. And the Buddhists also say the same, past karma. Yeah. And imagine, <laughs> life after life, generation after generation, it's not one lifetime. Hmm? Hmm. Therefore, the more I save, the better, and the more I can give. And the merit, I cannot take it from heaven, no. I had to earn it right here. Many lifetime here, earning and giving at the same time. And in this lifetime, I also had to earn and give at the same time. But too much, <laughs> too much giving, earning little. <laughs> no time to earn. I have to earn money also, sorry about that. <laughs> earning money, you have to think what to do, you know? Yeah. I'm not interested in money, really. In my heart, no. But I know money is a good, good instrument for helping other people. It depends on what you use. Then money is useful hmm? for refugees, for poor people, for disaster, immediate aid, you know. For these people, my money is useful. Otherwise, for me, not much. Even now, if I don't have any money, I can think of the way to make money. I have always earned money since my young days, so I could still earn now. To earn money just for yourself is, is so easy. Yeah, so easy. Yeah. Even when I was young, I don't earn much, but I still have enough money always to give it to the African children or whatever in, uh, <laughs> says on TV, help us to help these children. I, I did not have a lot of money, but I can give. You know, I, don't, I cannot give like thousands, but I can give hundreds. Like hundreds here, hundreds there, hundreds every month. But in some uh, desperate area, $100 can be used for a lot to feed the one family at least one month until they find a job. I remember there was one village in Africa, I, I read it when I was in England, oh no, I, I read a newspaper. A young boy, he wished he only $30 so he can buy a little farm <laughs> and plant vegetables and raise animals for himself. 30 pounds, sorry, 30 pounds only, imagine that. Oh, I sent him much more than that, <laughs> ten times more, <laughs> through the newspaper. Yeah, I remember that one time. But I don't always remember things. Just now I tell you about how little money I had, then I remember this. <laughs> but uh, nobody knew this before, right? I didn't tell you this, right? No. Now, I just sit and wait for my taxi or something, and I read just that little news in the newspaper in, in the hotel lobby. And then I sent immediately and asked the hotel to post it for me. Uh, you can always help in every situation, wherever you can. Huh? It doesn't have to be a lot. It's according to your mean. Yeah, according to your mean. And then God will give it to you. I never thought of God give it to me back. You know, when I was younger. Yeah, now I know about it, but <laughs> before that I didn't know. I couldn't care less. You know, I believe I, I have little enough intelligence to take care of myself. Yeah, I can always find some job to do, or you go to be a waiter. When I was a student, yeah, I was a waiter, just like I did for you right now. It's my old job. <laughs> it's no, no big deal. <laughs> yeah, you had to do many things to, to study and to live in a foreign land. Yeah, when you have not uh, learned enough the language yet, after I learned German, then I helped the refugees with my language, the Vietnamese refugees. At that time, there were hundreds of them were housed in one of the empty buildings, and the Caritas, Germany, was helping them, and the Red Cross also helped in different way. Yeah. So just now I just also wrote a note that we can give some donation to Caritas in Germany, you know? Yeah, because I remember they helped the refugees a lot. I can't do everything, too many things <laughs> every day, then sometimes I remember, sometimes I don't remember. 
Just like the story I told you about the little farm boy in Africa, I just remember it now. <laughs> 10 or 20 years already. <laughs> yeah, it's not like I don't want to do it. Uh, just sometimes it's not, it's not feasible to remember everything and to have time to do that. I remember I wrote it before also, more than months ago, in another country about donation to Caritas. But today I just remember again because the refugees, and then I wonder if I tell to give or not give. So I wrote again and said, remember to, <laughs> remember to ask about donation for Caritas. Yeah, you see what I mean, how busy I am. I need to also meditate. I need to spend at least uh, 10 minutes per day, uh, more than 10 minutes, to thank heaven and earth. I have to. That also take up some time, at least four times like that a day, 10 minutes each time. That's the minimum already. More I cannot. <laughs> More I cannot. More I cannot have time. Yeah. You think I, I sit here doing nothing? It's not like that. No. <laughs> it's not I'm just sit here doing nothing. No. Very busy. All kind of things. Yeah. I would like to do more if I have more time. But I can't. Yeah. So many days I didn't see my three dogs. Yeah. I think I have to see them today. I have to. I was thinking to build a little hut outside so that they can stay with me all day, so that I come in and out and see them. It's easier than, than waiting, because the big dog and the small dogs, you know, I'm worried they don't get on well. He <laughs> and the black dog. The black dog is more aggressive than him. I'm more worried about him than, <laughs> than about, he, about the three dogs. The black dog I adopted from Hungary, you know, more than 2005, I think. That's more than 10 years already. At that time, he was already big. So they all live very long, like happy. I, I adopted her in uh, 2000, 2001, but the beginning of 2001. So that means 16 years, 14 years, including 2001. Yes. 14 years, you, you're right. Yeah? 14 years. She still lives on. At that time, she was already, they told me she's three years old. I think, I think they cheated me. <laughs> because, so that you adopt, you know, younger adopt, you know. If they say too old, they don't. So like Lucky, when I adopted him, they say she's only five years old. The doctor told me at least nine years old already. Oh. All the teeth gone, his eye cataract and the bones and everything say that at least nine years old. They cheated you. <laughs> they say he's younger, so you adopt quick. Even if he was nine years old, I would have adopted also, because he already came and already stayed in my heart at that time. Or there's no way to cut it off, you see? I saw him all black and gray, because they put newspaper for them to lay on. Yeah, in the cage, wire cage, put newspaper, so a little softer. And he's all gray. So they wrote in the newspaper, gray poodle. <laughs> I search internet, they don't have gray poodle. <laughs> they have maybe black or, you know, golden and, and white, but they don't have gray poodle. And after we wash him three times, he's a white poodle. <laughs> you know, when we took him home, immediately wash him. And he still smells so bad, so we wash again and again. But later, I know the smell came from his uh, rotten teeth and, and uh, internal condition. So we had to immediately talk to different doctors. It cost me $10,000, you know, at least, you know, the beginning. <laughs> so we call him $10,000 dog. He won chien cầu la. In Chinese, we call it, huh? Cái gì? Con chó một vạn á? The ten thousand dollars dog, and that was just the beginning. Yeah, his teeth are bad, you know. And then the doctor had to take them out, and then then he had to put bones in it, bone, uh, fake bone, inside his gum. Yeah, because otherwise he cannot chew. You know, the gum will be floppy. You see what I mean? And he was one of the two best doctors in America. Yeah, best, best dentist. Mm -hmm. And his clinic is beautiful, yeah, and equipped with, 
you know, he, he specialized in that. Yeah. So we took him to the best, and then afterward he could even chew veggie bone. He had only four teeth left, you know, two upper level and two on the under level. But he could chew all the bones I gave him and fight for it. <laughs> and he can chew <laughs> carrot and all that, you know. Whenever he likes, he asks Hamid to go and steal some carrot for him. <laughs> because he's uh, short, he cannot uh, reach the the high basket, so Hamid always took it down for him. Yeah, I told you all this story. Yeah. Okay, but I like to say it again. <laughs> you pretend you didn't hear, okay? Because <laughs> I don't have my book here. I just talk until you go to eat. <laughs> and uh, I used to have another house, but long time ago. Nah, huh? it's gone. It's gone. Uh, because we had problem with neighbors, my dog. They say you have to fence a dog in here. I cannot let him go out. Oh, it's all my yard, but he said you have to fence it here, otherwise he go next to my house and blah blah blah. So, and the other neighbors, oh, they bark. <laughs> oh, just like cannot clap. <laughs> and they bark only now and then. Only when they come out, we take them out because they're excited, you know. So, oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, you're running around like that, harmless. No. Also complain, so I move out twice because of the dogs. I don't want my neighbor to hurt the dog's feeling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because when they say that, they say in front of my dogs, and they were all lying down and you know floppy, feeling sad. So I said, okay, we move house. Yeah, <laughs> I move to the next is a similar situation. <laughs> yeah, so I had to move again, three times. Huh? Not two times. The first house, the second house, and the third house. Yeah, and uh, in that house we had a big tree. I think like a rhubarb or something. It tastes like chocolate, very sweet. The fruit looked like this: a uh, flat bean, a china bean, flat, uh, flat like this, and long. Giống như là cái trái chùm kết của mình á. Ah. Yeah, yeah. And then, but when when it dries, it become blackened, yeah. and inside very sweet. Very sweet. Yeah, people use that to make uh, sweet instead of chocolate also. For people who don't like chocolate, or just a different taste, yeah? Oh, Hamid is addicted on that. <laughs> we have many of that trees, but it's too high, you know? It grows on a higher level, and uh, Lucky cannot climb up that, but Hamid can. He climbed on the wall, and then he jump on that, and then he took all the fruit that grow near to the ground, or he took the one that already dropped on the ground. Every day they went there together to have a party. <laughs> Only two of them eat this, the other don't eat. Yeah. Whenever he likes, he look at Hamid and then stamp his feet to say something. I don't know what they say. And then Hamid came up and brought all the fruit down, and they always, one for you, one for me, one for you, one for me. <laughs> yeah. Hamid's very generous, yeah. Even sometimes only one carrot, he cut into two, he bite it into two and give, give one, push it with his mouth for her lucky to eat. And they're both are very enjoying together. <laughs> Whatever Hamid likes and eat, lucky one also. They have the same taste. Some carrot, even potato, raw potato, eat also. If there's nothing, no carrot, then they eat raw potatoes. And no apples, of course. Eh? They eat together like that, like a brotherly, you know. Only two of them. The rest uh, have been never like carrot or potato, raw potato, nothing, no. But uh, Hamid and Lucky share the same taste. Always eat together, <laughs> both of them. <laughs> Whatever they can take, they eat together. Yeah. If Lucky is nearby, he always give him. Mm. He cannot not give. Hab Lucky, he will nake him until until he gets up. <laughs> he will sit next to him. You know. <laughs> <laughs> And then he gave. Lucky, he's really something. Whenever he wants to demand apology from Happy, I don't know what Happy did, but he demand apology. He stand there in front of her and stamp his feet, and then Happy has to come and lick him on the face, say sorry. I don't know what she did. <laughs> Truly, he stamp feet like a kid. You know, he really stand there. And he look at her in the eyes, stamping his feet until Happy has to kiss him. And just so quickly, Happy also feel reluctant. I, I feel that she's not really willing to, but he said, OK. <laughs> <laughs> this attitude, so obvious. 
not like she came and tender love like sometime when she does it but when lucky the man like that he come just like quickly too <laughs> and then okay okay <laughs> and then she went to another corner oh my god when you see that you thought they're humans you don't think they're dogs <laughs> uh, i'm really surprised also many times uh, how the animals understood each other and do things just like us like i told you Sometimes they're so quick, I cannot take photo, and I didn't think about that. You know, I didn't think about that. Like I said to Mirabo, because he always run after the beautiful blue one, and then the blue one don't like, always show him around, but he always persists. She likes a rainbow. She doesn't like the white one. She likes rainbow, the other um, macaw, you know? Yeah, yellow macaw, yellow and green. <laughs> And, but he always persists, you know, he likes her. <laughs> so kind of fighting, you know, I say, Mirabo and uh, Laguna, you both make peace, okay? And Mirabo, you behave, huh? she doesn't like you. Now you go and apologize, huh? apologize. He went and plucked one of these uh, olive twit and came and waving in front of, in front of uh, Laguna, you know, the blue, <laughs> the blue macaw. I was speechless. I knew they understood me, but I didn't know he would do that immediately. And how does he know Olive symbol peace in Europe? They were living in here, in this house. Yeah. But long time they're not here because it's too much trouble. Even in the same place, like in Italy, I just moved from one house to another, or in Europe, I moved from one country to another, have to report, and they have to come and check and poke and pick them, and they were so scared and flying, and their feathers were all flying down. So I moved them to some places I don't check all the time. Yeah, and I'm used to it now. I don't want to see them because I need to work. Yeah. If I see them again, then my heart will be softened, and then I spend time with them and all that. And right now, I can't afford for anything, even for myself. <laughs> yeah. So sometimes you just have to make sacrifice, you know. Yeah. I consider myself a monk. I left my family, <laughs> my birth family. Yeah. And many days now, I don't see my dogs. You know, another type of family. And today, I had to see them. Mm. Okay, then it's time. Time you go eat, huh? Mm. I'll see you later. <laughs> Thanks for being good audience. <laughs> okay, good. We go now. We go eat now. It's time to eat, right? You done? Kitchen done? Huh? Okay. Okay, kitchen staff, can you stay long? So you take care of yourself, okay? Yes. I mean, if you need some extra to eat, they work harder than they already sit, they do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's something extra. Buy it on the house, okay? Or on me. You tell, or to buy anything extra. Extra clothes, extra food, extra some fancy stuff that you used to have. <laughs> on me, okay? So that all the, all the working team, okay? Yes. Could you stay longer? You need to, to take care of yourself, understand? Blanket, clothes, any extra thing, okay? Or monthly need. Can you? Well, I say so. I told her already, but you say it too long again. Okay, huh? Come, 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 come. I will take care of my dogs. Yeah. Go eat good appetite.